Next slide. This is a picture of him when he was missing. This is one of the shops. This was everywhere when we were there in Deep River. And uh, the town were um, really concerned about what had happened. So I thought I'd let you know where Deep River was. It's obviously a long way from here. It's in Ontario and Eastern Canada. And if we go to the next slide, you'll see this is Ottawa here. And uh, Deep River is up along, up at this other end. It's about 200 kilometres north west of Ottawa. And it's actually along the Ottawa River, which forms the border between Ottawa, uh, Ontario and Quebec. And uh, it's actually fairly isolated, but there are small towns dotted right the way along here and in between this forest. And anywhere you go north of here, you can almost get to the Arctic Circle and you won't pass another road or another person. So it's north of here is very isolated. South is where it's a bit like Australia, uh, where we live on the coast and Canada, everyone lives along the US border. Next slide. This is Deep River. He worked here at Chalk River, which um, has a, it's not a nuclear power plant, it's a nuclear reactor that's used for experimentation. It was part of the Manhattan Project. And this is Deep River, which is about 10 kilometres away, and it's the model town that was built to service the reactor. And so most of the people that live in Deep River have something to do with the reactor or around there. And it was actually built in the 1950s, and before that, there was just bush there. And we actually met the daughter of the uh, person who owned the property and had it taken from him by King George V, I think she said. She was very, she didn't like English because they just, uh, just acquired the property on, not on just terms. So the next slide, just um, this is uh, Deep River Town itself. This is Welsh Bay where Lockham was found, so it's quite near the town. And the Ottawa River itself, it's about two kilometres wide at this point. It's quite shallow along the bank. It does get deep around the points though, so you could walk through along here, you could walk in the water and walk out quite away and just come up to your knee. But when it goes around the points, the river suddenly drops quite deeply. Next slide. This is, you'll, you'll see this subsequently in some of the slides, this is the sign of Deep River. They, each town has their little water tank. It's a bit like in Australia when you go up to a town, you see the wheat silos. In uh, Canada, you see these water tanks as you drive along the road for each town. Next slide. This is where Lockwood lived on Summit Avenue. Um, he was renting a house there. Uh, as we hear, he made a decision not to buy, but he was very happy in that house. He lived in the same house pretty much for the whole time he'd been there. Um, next slide. This is the Google uh, street view of his house, number 20, uh, 25, and you can see that it was a small house and had a uh, garage at the back. This is what it looks like in midsummer. If we go to the next slide, you'll see this is well, this is probably what it looked like when Lockwood was there. It had been a, quite a mild winter. There was only about a metre of snow. Uh, there's usually two metres at this time, we were told, but it was about a metre. And this is where he's dug um, uh, a path out from uh, his house. And so this is so he was walking at about 12 at night through snow as deep as this. And so it's you know, quite quite an, an effort. And the other thing to say about that, because it had been mild, when he was working, it was only about minus 4 degrees, so it wasn't particularly cold. This place gets down to minus 30. Next slide. Uh, this is when we were there, and you can see most of the snow had already melted. There was a bit more when Rupert was there. You couldn't open the front door, and you can see a little bit of snow left over on the side. But at the start, it was, even though they don't look too cold, it was about 1 degree. Yeah, it was pretty cold, really. Next, next slide. This was sent to me by one of the canoeists who found Lachlan's body and he's just pinpointed where Lachlan was. And so this is an area that Lachlan really liked to walk and ski around and it's called the Silver Spoons Trail and I've got some photos later of this actual um, fire break that they've cut. So what is hypothesised is this, that he was walking, doing a loop and instead of walking along the trail there, it was probably easier at night to walk along the side of the river because it was open um, there was better light, although it was a moonless night on the 18th, and he'd probably done it before because he thought that the, when we were there, even though it was much later, the ice was quite solid by the bank and it was about two feet thick. So we think he'd probably done this before and he probably walked down here to the beach and was walking around and he probably intending to walk back here and he thought that he probably fell in somewhere or went through the ice somewhere around this point. And then his body was just washed a short way. There's not a lot of current in the river, and it's probably quite, and he was found in about two, two and a half feet of water, so it wasn't very deep. Next slide. This is an aerial shot. All of these are Lachlan's. Um, 
He actually hired a plane at one point and took lots of photos of Deep River, which he used to help advertise. This is Deep River itself. This is the beach that I showed you. And just here is the point where we think he may have gone in because the water would have been deep enough around either of these two points, actually. This is um, Walsh Bay, and this is Barmer's Bay, which is the bigger bay that's next to it. And the next slide just shows a picture of Lachlan's looking back down Welsh Bay and just looking to almost exactly the point where he was found. This is a diagram of Kranzelkite, which is named after him. And, and this is what it looks like in the wild. It's a, apparently just a powdery substance, uh, magnesium sulfate, I think, which is hydroxylated. And there's just another picture of, of that. So, it's unusual for someone to have uh, a new uh, mineral named after them, but he has. And I'll leave it there. 